This is Josiah Plays Kingdom Death Monster on Tabletop Simulator. We are now starting Lantern Year 2 of our new Marrowhaven campaign, the People of the Skull variant. And we are going to go on a hunt, and we're going to hunt a level 1 white lion. Which should be tougher, it will be tougher than the tutorial white lion. So we go to Showdown Setups. Here's a nice piece of Kingdom Death art showing you what a scary place this is. Here's a white lion looking really weird. <clears throat> there was once a beast that wanted to feel how soft its fur was. Since it could not reach its own back, it killed many other creatures and spent time rubbing its paws over them. They say that when the monster finally killed a human, it fell in love with their soft hair, and its paws grew into a pair of fine human hands. That's not super weird at all. Alright, showdown setup. First, actually I need to do the hunt setup. So, I take White Lion event cards, which are here, a specific deck just for this creature, and I place them here, here, and here. We're not gonna, we're not likely to go past Overwhelming Darkness on this level 1 hunt, so I'm not gonna bother putting the cards over here. Um, the Lion himself, but then we also draw basic hunt events for every other space. The Lion comes here. We move towards the Lion on this track. The Lion might move backwards or forwards, depending on things. As soon as we actually reach the Lion, the showdown starts. Until then, we have to go through various events and such. So, here we go. Each each step forward, I have to decide who is who is going forward. Who's the event revealer? So, the first person is going to be Bone Tree, our brave one. We got Lion in Heat. The darkness is filled with unearthly screeching and yowling. Huddled together, the survivors close their eyes but cannot sleep. All survivors suffer one brain event damage. Well, I'm glad we got some insanity on these characters, because otherwise we'd already be starting to take pipe. <clears throat> Alright, next will be Bone Grinder. Scratching grounds. Claw marks scar the ground. The survivors may choose to investigate. Each survivor that investigates gains plus one courage and rolls on the table. Oh, everybody's investigating. So, first of all, we start with Laughing Skull. Give her a courage. Roll a d10. A four. Nothing happens. Okay. Give Bone Grinder a courage. Roll a d10. A three. He could take... Sifting through the rubble, a shifting stone crushes the survivor's hands. The survivor suffers one event though it damage to the arms location. Or he could spend a survival. Um... I'll, I'll take the arm damage. Bone Tree, what's your investigation reveal? A 10. A prize in the rubble underfoot. Gain a Lion Claw White Lion resource. Sweet. Lion Claw. I'll take it. And he gets plus one courage. These courage and understanding tracks are important. You get some fucking good abilities if you get those things maxed out. And there's only limited opportunities to raise those. Well, that's not really true. I guess there's kind of unlimited opportunities to raise them with certain things, but they're not, they're not super easy to raise is my point. <clears throat> so anytime you get a chance to get courage or understanding, you want to take it. 
Ghost Skull. Gets an eight. If I raised it to a nine, I could get another Lion Claw. Lion Claw, oh, it's a bone. We want that. Okay, raise it to a nine. Let's get another fucking Lion Claw. All right, cool. So we've explored all that. Moving forward, we go to a random hunt event. Now these are the crazy events. This is where you can get incredibly screwed by these random hunt events. You roll percentile, there's a huge table of them. 87. 87 on the hunt events. Weeping faces. Water flows from the eyes of the surrounding stone faces, gathering in a small pool. Any survivor may choose to consume from the pool and roll on the table below. Add plus two to the result if the survivor has three plus understanding. Insane survivors begin to weep uncontrollably. If any survivor is insane, roll again on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. Gain a speed token is nice. Alright, so who's insane? Not insane, not insane, not insane, not insane. Okay, we're all just barely not insane. Who wants to consume this shit? Suffer brain damage? Nothing happens. Heal injury levels. Or gain a speed token. I don't know. Seems kind of questionable. Well, the one that took some damage. Bone Grinder is definitely going to drink. He got a 9. Which means he actually gains a speed token. Now, a speed token only lasts for the next showdown. It's not a permanent increase to speed. It'll help, though. It'll certainly help with this fight. Thank goodness that the lions were making scandalous noises in the first step. Um... I don't know. Should we drink? Fuck it! We're drinking. We're all drinking. Laughing Skull's drinking. She gets a four. Nothing happens. Bone Tree's drinking. He gets a four. Nothing happens. Ghost Skull's drinking. She gets a two. Alright, she'll take a brain event damage. It's okay. <clears throat> Alright. I like the fact that we've already gotten two bones before we've even gotten to the fight, though. That's great. And now we move here, and as soon as we get to the lion, the hunt phase ends. We do not resolve this card underneath the lion. As soon as we get to the lion, the fight starts. So, now we go to the actual showdown itself. We bring the lion over to the board. And we set up. Each of us has to be six squares away from the lion. Anywhere we want, as long as we're six squares away. We automatically get two tall grass. Which is really nice, because it can help us not get hit. And two random terrain cards. We got a bug patch. I never get a bug patch. And the lonely tree! We got the lonely tree thing right out the gate. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna have to look up some lonely tree rules now. All right, a bug patch. Oh, we need to pull those things out of here. There's the lonely tree. There's a bug patch. You can scavenge from the bug patch. Adjacent to the monster. Okay, so we just throw it like right there Even right in front of the monster is fine 
It doesn't say it's an obstacle, so that means we can walk on top of it. The Lonely Tree. Obstacle, monster impassable, indestructible. Okay, I'm going to go to the Lonely Tree booklet. Since the Lonely Tree has just come into play. There's the picture for the Lonely Tree cover. The Lonely Tree. If you can see the Lonely Tree for what it really is, it's probably too late. This carnivorous organism hypnotizes anything that comes near, luring prey with hallucinations of their innermost desires. Once they draw near, the hallucinations turn to ceaseless dreams, while the roots consume the victim in their sleep. With each meal, a grotesque bulge appears on the lonely tree's branches, which slowly swells and takes on certain qualities of the devoured as they are digested. This fruit of the lonely tree is its true prize, as eating these conglomerations of phytohormones and human gristle... Ooh, I should have gristle in the name of something. can have beneficial, albeit bizarre, side effects. However, make sure to handle them gently while they are close to the tree, as the chemical volatility of the unripened morsels doubles as the lonely tree's primary form of self-defense. Alright, so we've got the... The lonely tree terrain card grants any monster the monster fruit card. This card alters the monster's behavior during the showdown. Treat it like any monster specific action card. When a monster has monster fruit in play, perform the actions listed on monster fruit before any other actions during the monster turn. Proceed to the rest of the monster turn normally. The Lonely Tree Terrain has the Monster Impassable rule, which has all the characteristics of impassable terrain but with the following addition. Monsters may not move through spaces occupied by monster impassable terrain. Monsters must move- oh, we can kite the lion around the tree. No, monsters must move around- oh, we need to get some bone darts in our life. Monsters must move around monster impassable terrain tiles, if possible. If this is not possible, such as when the monster is instructed to move in a straight line, they instead end their movement in the space before the terrain tile. That could be really useful, actually. Lonely tree... Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to read this story. I don't think so until I get the actual... The actual event. I'm not gonna read this story. There's an event card... For the Lonely Tree. Randomly in the Hunt Events deck. And that triggers the actual showdown with the Lonely Tree. Alright, so we've got the Lonely Tree here. There's this big-ass tree. Set up the showdown with one Nightmare Fruit miniature. That at star means monster level. Mont placed adjacent to the Lonely Tree. Alright, where the fuck do I get Nightmare Fruit? Are they in here? Yep. Wait, what? Okay, those are not only tree. What is it that I'm trying to get after? There's something about monster nightmare fruit miniatures. Are they in the terrain thing? Nightmare tree. I just want to know how big these things were supposed to be. There's a lonely tree thing. 
But that's for the the actual lonely tree herself. What's in here? Anything? Nope. Up top of train tiles. Oh, good call, Nox. How did I not even see that? So I'm just adding one of those. Monster starts a showdown with Lonely Fruit and Monster Fruit in play, which are... It says Nightmare Fruit. If the survivors are victorious and any Nightmare Fruit or miniatures remain on the showdown board, and they gain the Nightmare Fruit Strange Resource. <clears throat> I'm assuming those are the things that I'm supposed to have. I wasn't expecting to get this so quickly. Yeah, there isn't one called Lonely Fruit, so I'm assuming they're talking about the Nightmare Fruit one. There was two of these, there was two of these cards, that must be the two, that, um, are being referenced. <clears throat> so these start in play. Set up at least four spaces away from all board edges. Also need the card for tall grass. Card for bug patch. So I can put it wherever I want. As long as it's four spaces away from all board edges. Interesting. Well, let's see what these things do. Monster Fruit. Start of the monster's turn before performing any other actions. If it is within five spaces of a Nightmare Fruit miniature, it full moves towards it. Then if adjacent, it consumes the fruit, removes it from the board, and heals one wound. Fuck that. Or it gains a plus one damage to- Oh no. No. We can't have that. Nightmare Fruit Miniatures are an impassable terrain that occupy one space to have the following rules. Oh, you can walk up and do something to the fruit. Defuse the fruit! All fruit on the board explode. You fucking get completely rolled. This fruit explodes. You get completely fucking rolled. You can move the fruit. Or, or you can get one survival and remove the fruit. Return it to the tree. That's a good thing to roll. But it's a 10 that you need. Well, there's only one fruit. But I definitely do not want the lion getting a fucking plus one damage token. We cannot have the lion wrecking us with extra damage through the whole fight. So... I want this fruit, this fucking... Where do we put the fruit thing? We can put the fruit wherever the hell we want, right? What happened? Why are these cards so small when I... Something weird is going on. Like, normally you blow these up and they... Oh, I didn't realize you could do that. Well, hello. Um... Placed adjacent to the tree. 
All right, well, yeah, we're gonna make this as difficult as possible for the fucking lion to get to that fruit. So first of all, this fucking thing is gonna be as far into the corner as it can be. One, two, three, four. Actually, it's if in if in four. This thing's gonna be back here. And. The fruit itself, which looks pretty wackadoo, is going to be like all the way on the back side here. Has to be adjacent. Diagonal doesn't count as adjacent. So. I don't want the lion anywhere going anywhere the fuck near that damn fruit. Does he have to have line of sight to the fruit? No, it doesn't say anything about line of sight, so... Apparently not. If it's within five spaces, I don't think he's within five, though. Yeah, okay, so unless he moves over here by the tree, he's not gonna get within five spaces. So we should try to lure him down this way, just to make sure he doesn't go anywhere fucking near that, that fucking fruit. Plus, if the fruit remains on the board at the end, we get a resource. We get a nightmare fruit resource, which we could use for something. So, uh, we're gonna want to scavenge that bug patch. Now, where are we gonna put the tall grass? Well, the lion does get to go first, so we have to keep that in mind. He's going to come at us. So, let's put our tank, one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. And let's slap a patch of grass down right here. Actually, fuck that. Let's get further away from the tree. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put it right there. Okay. And then... What if I put the grass like this? I want to get more than one of us in the grass, ideally. Yeah, somebody else can be right there. And then let's just... Um, do the same thing. Grass has to be four away from other grass. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, perfect. We're starting in the grass just in case any shenanigans happen in the beginning. Alright, there we go. Oh, that's not adjacent, it's diagonal. Whatever. I'm gonna scale down this miniature like I did before. Right now it's just a little on the big side. Okay. <clears throat> Shit you can't do with the real board game. Now, we'd have to set up the, uh, the deck for... the lion. As a level one lion, he gets seven basic and three advanced. He 
He only gets 10 cards as a level 1? Yeah, I guess so. He has a toughness of 8. He has no speed or damage tokens. Oh yeah, I'm so fi I'm so used to fighting the level 2 ones now on my other game. And, like the level 1 one suddenly seems really easy. <laughs> I mean, it'll be tougher than the one we fought in the um tutorial, but Fuck this monster fruit. Alright. Here we go. Lion goes first. So... Turns to face. He chooses any of us randomly. Not randomly. I choose who he chooses because we're all equidistant to him. Oh, I need to draw his AI card, actually. Size up. Random threat in field of view. Okay, so he is going to choose one of us randomly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Reroll. Four. He chooses you, Bone Grinder. And he sizes you up. You are intimidated. Let's see if it works. It worked. One brain damage and knocked down. Okay, well, Bone Grinder is going to miss his first one. We do have Encourage now, but the question becomes, is it worth spending a point of survival to use it? Um, and the lion's just going to... That is not what I was expecting to happen. I thought the lion was going to come at us. The fact that he didn't fucks up everything. Well, I can just wait for him. I mean, it's kind of a scary idea to just give him another free turn. But... Usually he attacks the closest person to him. I kind of want to go after that bug patch, but I don't really want to... I'll move up to here. Five away. Fuck it, we're staying in the grass. He can come to us. Nobody's doing anything. Size up again? Are you fucking high? Motherfucker! You're the most asshole lion! He's like, nope, not coming over there. Ah, uh, three, six, nine. I mean, three, six, nine. Nine. It's gonna be Ghost Skull. <sighs> Roll a d10. A seven. She takes a brain damage and is not gonna. That's her last point of insanity, so. It's just fantastic. That's all he's gonna do. Listen, this time he has to come at us, right? He has to. He cannot have more than two size up cards in his stupid deck, right? Alright, let's go. We're giving him another free turn. This is a terrible idea, but. Chomp. Oh, I hate Chomp. It always hits you in the head. Closest threat facing in range. Okay, that's gonna be. That's gonna be him. Who's coming after River Song? Um, yes, it only has a one speed though, so he gets one die, accuracy of two, but check this shit out. He has a three evasion, and he's in the grass. That's three, four, five, six, seven. The lion gets one chance to roll a seven or higher. That's not bad. I like those odds. Yes, and he rolled a one anyway. So nothing happens. Nothing happens. See? My fucking tactics worked out. So now... Riverstong is going to keep being the tank. A 
Oh, she's gonna move to here. She's gonna move to here and... I mean, not River Song. Why did I think it was River Song? Because he's the green guy. Bone Tree, I mean. Yeah, Bone Tree. What's up, Darnaz? How you doing? Um... No, she's not. No, she's not taking her turn yet. These guys are. Okay, so she do we wanna do we wanna stand her up? Is it worth it? Who's got survival to burn? Bone grinder has survival to burn. So he'll do it. He'll stand her up. That way she gets a turn this time. And then she's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. But before she does, he's gonna go. Get behind. Oh, wait. One, two, three. Oh, I better let her get there first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I can move all the way over to this other, this other spot. All right, I mean, his blind spot now. What's going to happen, Bone Grinder? He's got plus one accuracy. Watch me a bit before you go to sleep. Sounds good. Glad you're here. He's got plus one accuracy. He's got one from the B in the blind spot. That means he only needs to roll sixes. And he's got an incredible two speed right now. So he gets to roll four fucking dice. Two hits. Let's see what we get. Glorious main. That's impervious. And the beast temple where if you don't wound, he wrecks you. That's good. That's good. Welp. Let's go for Glorious Main first. All I'm doing right now is to roll to see if I get a crit because I do have a total of two luck right now, so I can crit on an eight or higher. Oh, I did crit. You're right. Yes, I did, because he had three. He had three. I did take off the survival for Encourage. Uh, he, he just crit. Now, that doesn't wound the monster because it's an impervious location, but it does give me some shit. I gained the Shimmering Mane White Lion resource, so I, he just ran over there, and again, they're not even using weapons. With his bare hands, he just ran over there and ripped the lion's mane off. That's pretty hardcore. It's pretty fucking hardcore. And, oh, if he's insane, he gets the strength token. Damn it, he's not insane anymore. So he does not get a strength token. Alright, let's see if he can wound the other spot. I need to roll, uh, well, I need to roll a lot to wound, probably. This thing's got a toughness of 8. I've got a strength of 2. So I need to roll a 6 to wound, an 8 to crit. Here we go. Yes! Just enough to wound. So we now take off an AI card. Hopefully that was, like, enraged or one of the terrible ones. No special reactions or things happen. He just takes the damage. Okay. That was a good job, Bone Grinder. Way to rip off a main. So now she's going to go. A quick word of encouragement has lifted her to her feet rapidly. Ghost Skull running in. Um, she's got a one speed, so she gets to roll three dice with this. And she needs... Six is to hit as well. Wow, two hits. Very nice. Way to dismantle that lion. Oh, God. All right, Beast Tricep, if I fail the wound, it wrecks me. Beast Paw, if I fail the wound, it wrecks me even more. So we're going to do the Tricep first. Um, and she's going to be needing... A seven to wound, but she's going to crit on a seven or higher. So if she rolls a seven, she crits. If she rolls anything less, she misses completely against the tricep. Seven. Yeah, seven. 
Da 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 Take it, motherfucker. The torn muscle causes agonizing pain. The scar to mood currently in play. There's no mood currently. Oh, the white line is knocked down. That's going to help these other two put some wreckage on it. Because when it's knocked down, all of its reactions are canceled, and you hit on a three or better. Oh, God, knocked down is so good. And that means I don't have to worry about the reaction on this card anymore, because it doesn't get reactions because it's knocked down. So she still needs a seven, though, to wound. It's actually to crit. And a eight! Two crits in a row! Somebody's fucking shit up. She's like, oh, you want to rip off a fucking main? That's cool. I'll rip off its foot. Haha, <laughs> I see your main and I raise you a foot. Beast Paw. Your attack destroys the White Lion's foot. It loses its leverage. It gains a minus one movement token and it can't grab for the rest of the fight, which is awesome. Minus one movement and a Lion Claw. And she yeah, got another Lion Claw. Okay, minus one movement for the lion. And it's got a persistent injury. And she gains a lion claw. Wait, this shouldn't go back in the deck yet. I got two Lion Claws now. Okay, that well that was beautiful. Well done, Ghost Skull. Okay, well what happens next is... She's going to move. To here. She needs threes to knock down. She has a speed of one. Why does she have a speed of one? Oh, the bonus for naming herself a skull. Okay. She's going to roll three dice and she needs a three to hit. Three hits for Laughing Skull. Tearing it the fuck up. This is going way better than the beginning parts of my first campaign. Way better. We were getting our asses kicked by these lions. Alright, so... All reactions are cancelled, so we don't have to worry about this bullshit. Um, so all I need to do is see about some... Damage. She has no strength. She has no luck. So that means she's got to roll a fucking eight to wound. Okay, going from left to right. Six. A three. A four. She fails to wound on all, which normally would have screwed her over, but because it's prone, nothing bad happens. Alright, and that means it's the final turn, which is Bone Tree, who is definitely not River Song. Bone Tree is gonna lay into this motherfucker with his hands, and he needs threes to hit, and he gets three attacks. Let's call it two hits. But neither of these have a reaction. So let's go soft belly. He's got a strength of one. He needs a seven to wound. A nine to crit. An eight to crit. Seven to wound, eight to crit. Fails. Fails. Okay. Good try, buddy. We're done. Monster's turn. 
He instantly stands up. And he's... Oh, fuck you. I hate Enraged. When this comes into play, draw an AI card. So he gets to attack and do this. Now he gets a damage token. So now he's going to be hitting like twice as hard for the rest of the fight. Which can be really brutal on these low-level characters. Oh no, I put the wrong side down. And it doesn't go away until somebody's dismembered or killed. This is why in my other group I had that lion harp that I carried around, because if you if you have the lion harp you can play it and it'll get rid of a mood like this. Alright. Well, he also draws another AI card. Maul. Ooh, it's not great. Interestingly, though, he can't target anybody with this. He hasn't grabbed anybody, and nobody is knocked down. So there are no targets, which means all he can do is sniff. That's good, because look how brutal this attack is. Two attacks, two to hit, and three damage, which will be four damage with the with the thing he's got. And bleeding. Maul is a, is a vicious, vicious attack, but he doesn't get to do it, because nobody's grabbed or knocked down. So all he gets to do is this. Sniff. It ends its turn. Until the end of the next round, all survivors are now threats, despite any effects that say otherwise. And if he was level 3, he'd gain accuracy. But So that's not going to do anything to us. Nothing whatsoever. He just completely wasted his turn. Except now he has this dangerous enraged. I need to hit him... 7 more times. So that's not great. Um... All right, she's going to come over here and take this moment to root through the bug patch. Roll a d10 to scavenge, laughing skull. A three. That doesn't sound like a good number. Oh, it is a good number. The insects scatter, leaving their meal behind, gain a random basic resource. Which means this is another chance to get a skull right here. Which is, which is super awesome. Wait, what is this? Why is this not... in the deck? Oh, a monster hide. Damn it, I've got enough hide! I don't want hide! I want skulls and bones. It's fine. It's free, I'll take it. Um, that's all she can do on her turn. Let's talk about the people in the back. Um, I'm feeling Ghost Skull. Ghost Skull was tearing it up last time. Ghost Skull has an accuracy of one. She's in the blind spot. That's two extra accuracy. That means she needs a, what do you call it? An A6 or higher with three dice. Two hits. Crap card incoming. Alright. So that failure effect sucks. And that failure effect also sucks. Ooh, if she gets a crit, she can get a plus one permanent strength. Okay, let's go for Strange Hand. Come on. I need to roll a seven or higher. Six! Mother... Fucking, fucking. I don't think that wounds either. It doesn't. So, guess what? Instead of getting a cool thing, I get fucking beat in the face. Instinctively striking back, the white lion's oddly human hand darts forward. Perform a basic action targeting the attacker, so he spins around. And he's gonna. Oh, and he's enraged. This is gonna be lovely. Alright. So. He's got two attacks. What's her evasion looking like? It's a one. He needs threes. And he hits twice, of course. Each one of those is going to do two damage. And she's the attacker, so she cannot use survival to dodge. 
So she's just gonna take this to the face or some other location. Arms and body, two damage each. Well, that's gonna knock her down, but no severe injury yet. That cancels her second attack completely because she's now knocked down. Nice try, Ghost Skull, but you massively failed. All you had to do was roll a 7, lady. Just one 7. That's all I ask out of you. Okay, so, well, let's do, um, not River Song. Let's do Bone Tree, now that he's in the blind spot. And Stout with some 6s to hit, 3 dice. One hit. Against the fuzzy groin. Oh, this would be nice to get a crit on, because if you crit on the fuzzy groin, the monster will attack you and only you for the duration of the entire combat. It's so mad because you fucking ripped its testes off that it, you become its only target forever. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I've had that happen. It's not always good but it would be great for it to happen to bone tree since he's our tank so to wound i require a seven to crit i require an eight a nine yes bone tree rips off the lion he's like hey you ripped off a mane and you ripped off a paw? That's cool. I'm gonna rip off the thing's balls. We are ripping a lot of pieces off this lion. This lion's gotta be like, this is fucking bullshit. These guys don't even have weapons. And they're not even- they're naked. A bunch of butt-naked humans with nothing but their hands are fucking tearing me to pieces. What is this shit? job bone tree all right uh your attack destroys the white lion's healthy genitals the monster is li oh shit it gains a plus one damage token i forgot there's a downside to this so now it's doing a pile of damage uh the attack will permanently gains the priority targeted token the white lion will attack them until the attacker is dead or the white lion is dead no exceptions so Bone Tree is officially the tank now because nobody else is going to get attacked except for him. And it's a persistent injury. It means we keep it in play. Alright. Well. GJ, Bone Tree. GJ. Glad he has that monster grease now. Bone Grinder. You're the last one to go. Um. He can't get to the blind spot. He's just gonna attack from the front. Actually, no. He'll move to the flank. That way, no matter which direction the lion is facing next time, he'll be able to get back to a blind spot. Um, he's got one accuracy, no blind spot bonus, needs a seven to hit. Gets four dice. Ooh, two perfect hits. Ah, there's the trap card. I was waiting for you, clever ploy. Okay. Basic action targeting the attacker. By the way, specific target things like this do override the priority target thing. The only time priority or target applies is when the monster has to choose a target for some reason. When it specifically targets an attacker, it, it, then that doesn't, the priority target doesn't matter. 
Um, so line turns to face. And, well, it's got a lot of damage tokens right now. What's his, his evasion is one, so the lion needs threes. Come on, roll low. Or roll super high, I guess. That's also an option. Well, that's two hits, each of which is going to do a beefy three points of damage. So Bone Grinder is fucked. He's about to take some permanent injury. Some some oh body and head. Bone Grinder's a fucking dead man. He is a dead man. He's got a roll on the on the death table for body and head, which are the two most dangerous locations. He's only got two survival to play with. Oh man, I need to roll good here, because this is about to get bad. Remember when I said, oh, a lion, this is easy. This is so easy. Yeah, well, I was wrong. Because we're about to lose a guy. All right. First is body wound. First is head wound. Nine. Yes. Shattered jaw. You drink your meat through a straw. You can no longer consume or be affected by events requiring you to consume. You can no longer encourage. That's a dick move. Alright. Injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleeding token. Alright. Could have been worse. Before I even bother to draw that card out, I'm going to see if he dies instantly from the next one. So now his body wound... No, he can't dodge because he's the attacker and because he's doomed. Alright, a 7 doesn't seem so bad. Actually, no, I already chose not to. A ruptured spleen. Skip the next hunt. A vicious body blow. Green two bleeding tokens. What are my other options here? I've got two survival. I don't want to be disemboweled. That sounds bad. Broken rib is bad. Collapsed lung isn't bad, though. If I dare to spend all of his survival. Ooh. I dare. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm getting him a fucking collapsed lung. Minus one movement token and a bleeding token. He has no survival left, which is super danger zone. Um, and he now has the permanent injury. Broken jaw, shattered jaw, shattered jaw. He got his bones grinded. Impairments. No longer encourage sucks, but otherwise that's not a horribly debilitating injury. Well, that's the end of our turn. Kind of ended on a sour note. But, he's not going to be getting attacked, except for as reactions to his own attacks. So he will not be getting... So he won't be able to spend survival anyway. So really it doesn't matter if he doesn't have any survival right now. Because on the ter monster's turn, all it's going to do is attack him over and over. Alright, uh, two damage tokens is a bad day when we don't have any armor. Reshuffle the hit location deck. Let's see what he gets now. Grasp. Oh, but he can't grab because his fucking paw has been ripped off. Close is knocked down, survivor. Actually, he is knocked down. Oh, but, oh, but you don't, you don't do the pick target thing. That's what the priority target thing says. You completely skip the entire pick target phase and always pick, always pick him. So move and attack. Speed of one, accuracy is two, but he needs a seven to hit bone tree.
And he fails. Ha ha! Bone Tree is invincible! Bone Tree dies in five. That's all, that's all out of you, fucking. That's all out of you, lion. I ain't lying. Well, we need to hit him six more times to kill him before he manages to murder his turn ends. He was... No, they're both get up because they weren't knocked down on the monster's turn. Alright, it's our turn again. I'm real nervous about attacking with him. Real nervous. So let's start with Ghost Skull. She's already in position. All right. She needs sixes to hit. Three dice. Two hits. No trap, no trap, no whammies. Alright. If she fails with this, bad things happen. If she fails with this, bad things happen. Alright, let's do... Fuck, these are both terrible. Let's try Beast Chest first. Beast's chest. She needs seven to wound and crit. Fails. Fuck. Full move monster forward in a straight line. Any survivors passed over suffer grab, except they can't suffer grab because the thing's thing has been ripped off. And his movement currently is a five. He gets knocked down from the collision. But he does not get grabbed and pulled over here. Because the monster can't grab. The other attack is cancelled because the monster is now out of range. Hmm. We know it's going to turn around and come back here after him. So we want to stay out of its way. She's going to come in now. One, two, three, four, five. I guess four would be sufficient. And... Three attacks needs eight. That is a bunch of not eights. All right. I'm scared to send Bone Grinder in because if he gets a reaction attack, he could be so fucking dead. But you know what? Go Todd. All right, he goes in. He doesn't care. They call him Bone Grinder, not sits around cowering. Or... Um, and he's such good stats, though. If I lose him, I'm gonna be pissed. He um is attacking with a seven to hit, but with four dice. 
Oh, he's gonna die. What am I doing? Only one hit. Well, if he fails to wound here, he's about to fucking take it. He's about to fucking take it. He needs a six to wound. Yeah, he needs a six. 50-50 chance. No! It rolled off the- Why? Why would you roll off that eight? Damn it! Alright, well, he doesn't wound and he gets wrecked in the face. First he suffers a brain damage. He's out of insanity. Then he gets a fucking basic action on him again. Oh no, this is gonna be really bad. He could super be dead right here. Uh, alright, he gets two speed. It needs to roll threes to hit him. Come on. Low, super low rolls. Ludicrously low rolls. Those are not ludicrously low. Alright, hit locations. Fuck my life. This thing is doing three damage with each hit. Waste and body. God damn it, body! I mean, the. Oh, well, even the waste is gonna have. We're gonna have to roll twice on the fucking table. He has no survival, so he's really got a good chance of being dead here. Let's roll the body first. Come on, high roll. High. High roll. Seven. Might not be too terrible. A ruptured spleen. Vicious body blow. Skip the next hunt. Gain two bleeding tokens. Vicious body blow. Ooh, he's... Oh, no. If he gains one more bleeding token, he's dead. Oh, no. Isn't that just on wound that it attacks? You missed. I may be wrong. What's up, Ross? Triple O fourteen. What? What? What do you mean? I'm not. I'm not. I don't understand. No, he didn't miss. He. F oh, it's. Oh God, you're right, Ross. It's only. It's only when you wound him with that attack, not when you fail to wound him. Oh shit. Thank you. That's actually that actually helps me a lot. I'm glad he didn't wound then. All right, so I get this brain damage back and I get these two bleed tokens back off me. Oh my god, you just saved my fucking life. Okay, whew. That was awesome. It's the kind of comments I like to see. Fixing my fucking mistakes. Alright. So it does not actually turn around. Face him. They didn't wound. Alright. Um... Well, Bone Tree is knocked down and can't do anything this round. He'll just stay where he is. What we're going to do next is start the Lion's turn. Grasp. Alright, well we know, he we know he attacks him because... Priority target token. He runs over there. He only gets one attack. He still needs a 7 to hit Bone Tree. And he misses! Fuck you, lion! Bone Tree is fucking invincible. Look at this. He has taken no damage at all. Meanwhile, Bone Grinder's over here all roughed up. That's it. Lion's turn is over. It's our turn again. Alright, move in. Move in, Laughing Skull. 
three attacks needs sevens. Two hits. Okay, so if she fails to wound there, it moves forward. If she wounds, attack against the priority target target, but she can't. Because this critical thing means that nobody else can gain the pr priority token target. Alright, so she's going to do Beast's Flank first. Looks like she needs a 8 to wound. 9 to crit. 8? Fucking wounded. Like a boss. And the second attack... Also needs an 8 to wound, 9 to crit, and fails. So on that failure, the beast moves forward in a straight line. Bad things happen. He can't grab anybody because his paw's been ripped off. But he can knock some people down, sadly. Oh, she gets the big knock back because he landed on her. He gets knocked down. She gets pushed back. 5. And knocked down. So, way to go. Laughing Skull. Fucked everything up. Alright, does she want to encourage someone? Yeah, she does. Because everybody's about to lose their turn and shit. He wants to encourage Ghost Skull. One, one survival spent. Ghost Skull will stand up. She'll move up. She's gonna, gonna move to here and be kind of staged in that area. Bone Grinder is not going in for another fucking attack at this point, at least not unless he's standing in the grass or something, because he's just in too, too rough a shape. This is where I wish I had darts, but we haven't built any weapons yet. And we'll move up here into the grass next to Next to his friend, oak tree, uh, bone tree, stone bear, river sign, bone tree. That's who I moved next to. All right. And bone tree can't do anything because he's laying there. Nobody's going to encourage him. But ghost skull, on the other hand, has got some fucking work to put in. He's going to come put in some work. Got three attacks. She needs sevens to hit. He performs no hits. That's the end of our turn. Lion's turn. Size up. Well, we know who that's going to be against. Uh, roll a d10. Well, shit. Brain damage and knockdown. I'll take the brain damage. He just continues to be knocked down. That's the end of the lion's turn. She's moving in to position behind. She needs sevens to hit. Three attacks. Three hits? Holy shit, Laughing Skull. She's gonna get herself into trouble. Clever ploy, the very first card I draw. What did I just say? 
All right. Well, the lion spins around and it prepares to go into wreck mode. Her evasion is not anything, so it just needs to roll twos on two dice. Two hits. Well, she's in trouble. She's taking two three pieces coming in and she has no armor. Body and waist. She's knocked down, first of all. Second of all, she's got to roll some times on the table of badness. Let's roll the body first. A ten. Fouled over. The blow sends you sprawling and you're knocked down. Great, it didn't do anything to her. And let's roll the um, waist. A seven. Broken hip. Your hip is dislocated. You can no longer dodge. You can no longer dodge. Suffer minus one permanent movement and gain a bleeding token. Nah. She's gonna spend a survival to make that a slashed back. Making sudden movement is excruciatingly painful. You cannot surge until showdown ends. Gain a bleeding token. Not a bad thing. One bleeding token. She already couldn't surge, so no big loss. But of course now she's in the danger zone as well, having no survival. Got the combination of the plus one damage token from his test he's getting off ripped off and him being enraged is a really brutal combination because that means no matter who he attacks he's automatically inflicting severe injuries on any hit location which is just gross man we needed some darts for this fight <laughs> all right well who else is gonna do something he just got knocked down again I'm not gonna bother to stand him up I want the lion coming back to him here in the grass I'm fucking scared to have anybody attack this thing I'm terrified because I'm afraid that like it's gonna just turn and murder somebody ghost skull's got two survival left though so if she moves behind, she's gonna get knocked down when the lion turns. But that's okay. You know what? That's fine. I don't care if she gets knocked down. I need her to hit. Which means we're at... Uh, we're looking at a 6 to hit. 3 dice. One hit. Oh, clever ploy means we reshuffle this. Lost ding dong. Alright, one hit. What do we got here? The beast back. Alright, it's gonna move away if she fails. She still needs a seven to hit and crit. A six, motherfucker. Why it gotta be a six? All right, well, it's not going to grab anybody, so this isn't really a big deal. It's just inconvenient. It re-knocks down her. Bone tree is knocked down, and... Bone Grinder is fucking scurred. You can use the fruit to... to fucking... trigger the story event? I don't know if that's a good thing or not. 
I was trying to decide whether I wanted to get the actual fruit or if I wanted to go over there and try to use it to to get a survival back. Of course, you have to roll a fucking and so it's not like that's going to happen. So yeah, that's a terrible idea. I don't want to go after that fruit. What is up, Saito? How you doing? We're getting mauled to death by a lion. Although I will say that my survivors, considering they are naked and have no weapons, are doing pretty good. One of them managed to rip the lion's mane off with his bare hands. One of them ripped the lion's nuts off with his bare hands. And one of them ripped the lion's paw off with their, her bare hands. So we're, we're doing some brutality to this thing, but it's also doing some brutality to us. Alright, um... All right, I don't want Bone Grinder to go attack again. I don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose him at this early stage, and he's in too much danger if he attacks. With no survival to protect him. So for now, he's just going to come over here and chill in this grass. And be scurred. Apparently his name is actually Bone Cowerer. And of course, Bone Tree can't do anything because... 50 Shades of Rain, then? He can't do anything because he's knocked down. Okay, it's the lion's turn. The lion is going to maul. That's not good. That does a lot of damage. But it has to go at it has to go after Um Bone Tree, who might be too far away for it. One, two, three, four, five. And it has a minus one movement token, so it can only get this far, and it doesn't knock down um, Ghost Skull. Okay, cool. And that's all it does. If, you, if it can't get to its target, it just moves and does nothing. So that was actually a great turn for us. Still have nightmares about rain scrotal mauling. <laughs> oh god, that was pretty vicious. The lion's dead. What are we going to do? It's turn end, so actually everybody who was knocked down gets to stand up now. Too scared to attack. Not too scared. Wants to stay in the grass so that he can tank in the tall grass. Also not too scared. So she's going to come around first. And she's going to light this fucker up. And by that I mean miss a whole bunch. Because she needs... Six is to hit, she gets three dice. One hit. Got him in the elbow, so if she fails to wound, it's gonna full move forward, which is a pain, but not life ending. So we need to try to wound, she needs a seven to wound and crit. An eight! Yes! Critical hit, motherfucker! She's put out a lot of crits this fight. Um. He takes a wound, he's lost another AI card, he's only got three remaining. So four hits and he's dead. Four wounds and he's dead, actually. Um, the reaction is cancelled because it's a crit. The monster howls in pain as the blow breaks its elbow with a sickening crunch. Non-deaf survivors gain plus three insanity and may stand if they are knocked down. That's rad. Plus three insanity for everybody is fantastic. We all just went insane. We all just went insane, y'all. They weren't insane before. She breaks the lion's elbow and everybody goes fucking nuts. <laughs> everybody goes berserk. I love it. Dude, you gotta be insane in this game. If you are not insane, you're a dead person very quickly. This is that kind of world where you have to be sane to survive. Or insane to survive. Alright, good job, Ghost Skull. Put some damage on it. Got us some insanity. Awesome. Uh, up next, we'll do Laughing Skull. Who... In case you're wondering, all my characters are named Bone something or Skull something because I'm, I'm playing the People of the Skull campaign where my my settlement of survivors worship skulls is like the ultimate thing and everybody has Bone or Skull in their name. So that's, that's, uh, that's why that is. Okay, so Laughing Skull gets to take her turn. 
She's got no accuracy, but she is in the blind spot, so she gets a plus one. She normally she needs an eight, so she needs sevens to hit, and she gets three dice. Whoa! Two hits! No trap card. No trap card. I got him in the flank. That wound effect won't won't matter. Ooh, that knockdown would be nice. Okay, let's do the beast's flank first. She has no strength, so she needs eight to wound, but she can crit on a nine. Crit! Fuck you, motherfucker! It's knocked down. That's awesome. Now he can run in attack because the now his now the lion's reactions will be canceled. And of course it actually takes damage. All right. Now she can attack the strange hand with no fear of getting attacked back because it's knocked down and she only needs a 3 to hit. Oh wait. She's already hit. She doesn't have to hit. She just has to wound. But she needs an 8 or a 9 or a 10. <laughs> Nine, another crit! D -d 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 double crit! Oh, I'm feeling this. You hack off the monster's hand. Alright, we've already ripped off one of its paws, and now we've ripped off one of its hands. Because this is a strange lion that has human like, human like hands for some reason. Um, we are ripping all sorts of pieces off of this thing. Spend a survival to treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. Oh, fuck yes! She doesn't have any survival! No! She can't get the bonus. Fuck you. Still. She does the damage. Persistent injury, lost hand. So there's a lot of persistent injuries going on on this thing right now. It's like a platypus. The... One of the only venomous mammals which, by breaking their hind legs and exposing the bones, are able to use these spurs to envenom others. That is really weird. That is super weird. Alright, so great news is, now that he's knocked down, we should all just be charging in there like maniacs to take advantage of it. Which is precisely... ...what he will do. Now that the lion's knocked down, he's not scared anymore. Plus, he's gone insane, so he's like, fuck it. He's like, I remember when I ripped off your mane. He's going in. He gets four dice to attack. And he needs sevens. Got two hits. No trap card. No trap card. Okay, good. We get to ignore these failure reactions completely. So let's do Beast Maw first, and then Beast's Ear. And let's talk about some needing six to hit. Nine to wound. Eight to wound. Failed. A uh, fuck yes, another crit right now, because he's got plus one luck, and he gets plus one luck with fist and tooth. So, that's another fucking crit. In the beast's ear. The force of the blow damages the white lion's ear. It is now po partially deaf. It gains a minus one accuracy token. That is fantastic. Well, this doesn't count, Saito, because this isn't a video game. This is a this is a board game that I'm playing using Tabletop Simulator, so it's like, it's not, I'm not really like doing a video game playthrough. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, uh... Oh, hey, guess what? One more hit and the lion's dead. All right, I'm feeling good. Put that on there, give him a minus one to hit. All right, you know what? Bone Tree, go in there and finish this shit. The lion is still knocked down. All I need is threes to hit because he's knocked down. Alright, three hits. No trap card. No trap card. No, motherfucker! Alright, well, all those hits are cancelled. <laughs> and he just moved out of the grass. So he's going to be easier to hit now. 
But still, he's got amazing evasion. Alright. So the lion is going to attack him with two dice. He needs twos to hit. Three, four, fives to hit. Sixes to hit because of the minus accuracy. So he needs sixes to hit. One hit. Alright, Bone Tree's going to take it. This could still kill him because he has no armor anywhere. Could still kill him. He's taking this to the waist. It's certainly going to knock him down because of the heavy injury. But this could still kill him. He does have two survival though, so he probably won't die. Alright, here we go. Four. That is not a good roll on the waist injury. It's an intestinal prolapse. Your gut is gravely injured. You can no longer equip any gear on your waist as it is too painful to wear. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleeding token. Ah, uh, you know, that might not be that bad considering we're people of the skull and we can't wear anything out of bones and I don't even know of any waist gear that even uses bones. But... Just in case that's a problem, we're going to use a point of survival to turn it into uh, bleeding kidneys and just gain two bleeding tokens. Since he doesn't have any bleeding tokens, I think it'll be fine. Point of survival. Alright. Well, trap card screwed us there. Could we maybe... We reshuffle the hit location stack after that. Yeah, because it's a trap card. The first thing, the thing it says on the trap card, if you are prone, if the monster is prone, he instantly stands up. It cancels his knockdownness if he draws the trap card. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of brutal. Every tart in this fucking game can kill you, no matter what you're doing. If you want to have two of your survivors have a baby, you've got to roll on a chart. And, like, they can die <laughs> from having a baby. Everything, no matter what it is. Every chart will kill you. All right. What's happening now? I'm, I'm confused. Uh, I think we've all taken our turns. And he can't do anything else. So we're back to the white lion who's no longer knocked down. There are no cows in this world because this world is so dark and evil and dangerous that all the cows have left. Oh, he has no AI cards. Great. All he can do is basic action. He has to target... He has to target, um... <clears throat> Bone Tree, because Bone Tree ripped off his nuts. So he's going for that. He's got to roll sixes to hit still. Six is to hit, and he gets two dice. Oh my god, we're so lucky. He missed twice. It's beautiful. Fuck you, lion. Alright, we only have to hit this motherfucker once, and he's dead. So let's not fuck around here. Who has the best chance to wound? Nobody, really. I guess Bone Grinder does. He's got a two strength, but he's the one that also has the least chance to survive a reaction. I think we gotta have Ghost Skull do it, because she's got the most survival left. Let's try to give the finishing blow to Ghost Skull. She's already in the blind spot, so she actually only needs a uh, six to hit. Wow. Six, six, six. Triple hits. Okay, check this out. No fucking trap cards. 
All right, cool. All right, this one has no horrible f reaction on the figure, so we'll go after the Beast Femur first. Remembering that she needs a 7 to wound, but she also needs a 7 to crit. 8! Fuck you! It's over. We win. Game's over. Victory. Also, you bruise the White Lion's Femur, crippling its graceful movement. It gains a minus one movement token, and I gain an extra resource. I just ripped another piece off this thing. Dude, look at how much stuff she's collected, and we haven't even gotten to the rewards phase yet. Actually, we collected a lot of resources this, this time before even getting to the part where you get your resources. All right, awesome. She annihilates that motherfucker. I have never, in all of the times I've hunted white lions on my other game, which is a lot, I have never ripped this many pieces off of a white lion in one fight. And this is with fucking nobody using any weapons. We ripped an incredible amount of pieces off of this lion. Oh, and we get the Nightmare Fruit, that's right. I'm so glad I put the Nightmare Tree way over here, and we didn't have to deal with it. And, like, the lion didn't go over there and... ...gain another strength token from... Alright. Enraged. Goes back onto the... ...advanced AI deck. And the Nightmare Fruit stuff. I don't even know where to put these cards. I'll put them up here by the hunt board. Alright, let's... Divide out. Let's get his advanced cards out of here so we can rebuild the decks for the next lion fight. I'm not going to hunt a lion next time, though. I don't think. I think I'm going to hunt the Gorm. Seven back on the basic deck. Let me shuffle all these. Let me shuffle that. I don't think I'm gonna... Okay, and then all of these things go away. A lonely tree can go back in the terrain deck. Tall grass can go back in the train deck. Tall grass tiles can come over here. The lion can move back over by the hunt board. My people can come down here and get the fuck out of the way. The lonely tree can come off. The nightmare fruit can come off. Actually, I need to look at that card. Uh, Lonely Tree. If the survivors are victorious and any Nightmare Fruit miniatures remain on the showdown board, they gain the Nightmare Fruit Strange Resource. That simple. So give me... Now, the Nightmare Fruit, again, there's, there's some misnaming that goes on on these Nightmare cards. Sometimes they call something Lonely Tree or Lonely Fruit, and sometimes they call it Nightmare Tree or Nightmare Fruit, but they get them mixed up. They're not always correct, so I think it's actually called the Lonely Fruit on the card, not the Nightmare Fruit. Fuck is it? Here it is. So we got a Lonely Fruit. Yeah, I would imagine trying to actually use candles to light a board game session would be ludicrous failure. 
All right, let's draw. Let's let's go to our aftermath. Okay, so we get a hunt XP. We don't get weapon proficiency yet because we don't have weapon proficiency yet, but we're about to get it. And we get four basic and four white lion resources. So please give me a skull. It's not a skull. Give me a skull. That's not a skull. Give me a skull. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, yes! Skull's besting because I'm playing the people of the skull campaign, which means we can use skulls to do a cool ritual to increase our stats. Normally, in the regular campaign, the skulls aren't really worth shit, but here they're awesome. I still need some bones, though. Dude, how much bones did I get in all this random crap down here? That's not a bone, that's not a bone. That's a bone. Those are bones. So I have gotten three bones already. Let's see what I get from the White Lion deck. A bone? A great cat- oh, an eye of cat. You can make a thingy with that. And a great cat bones. And an oh, good, I need these- oh, good, I needed these bones so badly. Alright, great. Uh, we're gonna copy this. Just slap it over here. Copy this. This is just something I need to do because of the way Tabletop Simulator and this mod for it is set up. I need to take these four, put them all back in the deck and shuffle it up. Put this stuff back in the back in the deck and shuffle it up. Put this back in the deck and shuffle it up. Shuffle that just for fun. All right, so I got all these things. Plus, this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and I don't longer have the priority target token, and this guy, and this guy, and all three of these. So this is my, this is my haul from this hunt. Pretty fucking good, honestly. We should be able to make some stuff. Which is good, since we have fucking nothing, currently. Alright. Bring him over here to my settlement area. Can you do a ritual to make it fly and crack jokes? Man, I wish. That would be so cool. Alright, we're going to do our heal and reset on everybody. Get rid of all the damage. And the tokens that are unnecessary now. Alright, cool. Now we head back to the settlement. With all of our goodies. Oh, I forgot to do hunt XP. Oh, and we're about to hit an age milestone. She's not, because she wasn't on the first hunt. But the other three will. They hit their first age milestone. Which is good, because it means... We get a thing. Four resources to the northwest of the board. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yes, 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 right? Because I didn't... Thank God, you reminded me, Nox. Yeah, these are not the copies. These are the... Well, they are the copies, I mean, but they're not... But yes, I need them. I, I get them. They're mine. Just forgot they were over there. Oh, God, I got a ton of stuff. Okay, this is great. Um... Alright, Hunt XP. So we got Age Milestones to do for three characters. So we go down here to the Milestone Events. That's what milestone events look like, just in case you're wondering. And go to age. That's what aging looks like. Apparently you're covered with blood all over your hands and feet, and there's giant weird faces behind you. This is the only table in the game, I think, that doesn't have a result on it that just kills you. <laughs> The time in the darkness changes you. Okay, so three of my people have gained weapon proficiency, and we need to choose a type. And that's hard for me to decide what I want to even put it in. I know somebody's going to go fist and tooth just until we can get enough. Oh, but they have to get all the way up to master for us to get that ability. That might not be worth it. I'm not going to decide yet, because I don't have to, technically. Because I can change my proficiency any time before I leave for a hunt. So once I get back to town and look at what kind of weapons I can make, then I'll decide. But what I do need to do is roll on this table for everybody. So starting with... not her. 
Starting with Bone Grinder. It's occasionally Bone Cowerer. He rolls a 2d10. He has no survival to modify this roll. Roll high. Really high. Ah, that's shitty. Nine. Oh, he gets a Fighting Art. That could be good. Or it could be completely useless. Let's find out. Unconscious Fighter. It takes seven Bleeding Tokens to kill you. Actually, that's pretty cool. Alright, let's see what um, Bone Tree gets. He, he has one survival to modify the roll, if need be. Fourteen. Also a random fighting art. Age milestones, or were they toddlers or something when they fought the White Lion? No, they weren't, but... The thing is that's weird about this game is that it runs on these things called Lantern Years. Each each year is called a Lantern Year, and it's not an actual year. It's not it's not what we would consider a year. It's actually a much longer period of time. Because you can have children in one Lantern Year, and the next Lantern Year they're like adults that are ready to fight. So it's some indeterminate long amount of time. And obviously the people are very long-lived, because your people can survive for quite a few Lantern Years. But it's not specified, like, how many days a Lantern Year is, because I don't think this takes place on Earth. And they're called Lantern Years because in the center of our settlement we have this thing called the Lantern Horde. This whole world is dark. Everything is dark. There's no sunshine, ever. It's just dark constantly, and so, and in the darkness, everything's really dangerous and scary and, and overwhelming to your sanity, and everything wants to kill you, so the only place of safety is places that have light, but there's hardly any light anywhere in the world, so they have this place that, for some reason, is filled with tons of these burning lanterns that's providing light, and so that's where they built their settlement, around the, around the lantern horde, but every so often, one of the lanterns goes out. And that's a lantern year. Is, is the time in between each lantern going out. But it's an indeterminate amount of time. But apparently it's pretty long. Um. Oh yeah. He gets a fighting art. Bone tree. Give me something cool. Tumble. Oh, tumble sucks. <laughs> I mean, tumble's okay. You can get out of the way when something would collide with you. But it's not really that cool. It's like that song, Ain't No Sunshine When the Cow's Gone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. Alright, what, uh, what is Ghost Skull going to get for her special thing? She rolls 2d10. Come on, give me something high so I get a permanent stat boost or something. Oh, a 4? What? She's going to get something terrible. Oh, wait. She got plus one permanent strength. Actually, do I want that or do I want that evasion? Because I think I have enough survival. I think I want the strength. I'll take the strength on her. That's nice. Alright, great times. Um... Everybody hit their milestone. We now move back to Marrowhaven, our settlement. And we go through the settlement phase. Survivors return. Yes, now we get some endeavors. Unfortunately, we still don't have anything that gives us extra endeavors. So, we only get four. It sucks, because in my other game I'm getting like ten every time. They don't die of old age, but they're forced to retire at a certain point. At which point you can no longer use them for battles. So they're basically useless. Um, but there's ways to get around that too. They're just not easy to, to come across. We get four endeavors. Oh no, we have to draw a settlement event. Settlement event is pretty much just code for we're going to fuck you over right now. Dark Dentist? What the fuck? A cloaked woman enters the settlement. All that can be seen beneath her hood is the sparkle of perfect teeth. She offers to improve the survivors if they are brave enough. 
Oh, we can spend bones. <gasps> hey, I could heal the Shadow Jaw. That's actually really convenient because I did get a Shadow Jaw. Wait, what do I have to trade for that though? Three bones. Oh, fuck no. Obviously, I'm not trading a skull. That would be madness. Three bones. That's a lot of bones. Monster tooth dentures. Four bones or a large flat tooth. Woman upgrades your mouth. What, plus one permanent strength once per lifetime. Dude, look at that picture. I don't know that I would want my mouth upgraded to be like that. <laughs> Metal jaw. Two iron. I don't have any iron. Your fist and tooth gain sharp. That's pretty cool. But the thing is, even if you spend the resources, you have to roll on a bullshit table. And look at what number one to two on the table is. You die. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Every fucking table. Oh my god, but it could be worth it. You get a skull. Maybe we should sacrifice. <laughs> but there's no way to make the roll that low on purpose. If we could just get the low enough roll, we could sacrifice Laughing Skull. She's not part of the core group. I <laughs> get another skull from her. I'm just saying. Oh, no. But it's not going to happen. Here's what would happen. We would waste a bunch of resources, and then we would not roll that, and it would suck. I don't think we're doing anything with the dark. This is not bad. This is actually a fine event. A lot of the events just completely screw you and there's nothing you can do about it. This one doesn't have any negative effects unless you choose an option. So this this event is fine. I don't mind this one at all. Do I really want to fix his shadow jaw? I mean, he could then encourage, but I don't think I do because I need to use these bones. You know what I'm saying? I need to make weapons. So I think we're going to do nothing at the Dark Dentist. So that gets shuffled back into the events. We might see the Dark Dentist again sometime. Update death count. Well, we've had no updates to... Um... Dude, let me show you something. When the first person died in our settlement, we had to decide what to do about it. And this is the art for that! <laughs> and we chose cannibalize. When somebody dies in our settlement, we harvest their body for resources. Now you can choose the good the good path also, but since I chose the good path in my other game for all these things, for all the principles, I'm going to choose the evil path this time. And for children, we chose survival of the fittest, which means our children have a better chance of dying when they're born, but if they do get born, they're stronger. I mean, if they do survive, they're stronger. Which is fine, because I don't plan to really use a lot of children anyway, hopefully. Hopefully I'm not, you know, having a lot of people die off all the time. I need more departing survivors gain survival thingies. Okay, it's almost time. Death count, right. Okay, it's time for the timeline. Now some shit will happen. Alright, ooh, endless streams, screams, and then Gorm climate. So we've got two events that we have to deal with. Endless Screams is the one that's related to the Screaming Antelope. So here's the art for that. Boy, we look happy, don't we? A scream pierces the silence around the settlement. As the noise fades, a chorus of horror rides up in answer. Rises up in answer. The settlement erupts into chaos, trying to comprehend the source of the terrible whale. You may now hunt the screaming antelope. Add it to your quarries. So we have three things we can hunt now. Never hunted a screaming antelope or a gorm, so I don't have no idea how that'll go. Nominate a single survivor to stand amidst the madness. They gain plus one courage and become the voice of reason. Hmm. 
Well, I'm nominating... It doesn't have to be a returning survivor, or it would say so. I'm nominating Blood Skull for this. She gains another courage. She is our leader. She comes the voice of reason. Let's roll that d10. A nine. That's probably good. Oh, good. We got Orator of Death. I like that one. The survivor stands firm in the face of the screaming unknown. Slow and strong words change the settlement's fear into tingling excitement. After all, the endless screams might be an opportunity to gain knowledge and harness the darkness. The survivor gains the Orator of Death fighting art, and all of our returning survivors gain plus two insanity. So we'll get a couple insanity on everybody, which is good. Because that protects you from brain trauma. But it can also really hurt you. Sometimes if you're insane, really bad things happen to you. But, you know, whatever, whatever. Orator of Death Fighting Arts. Yeah, insanity is like armor for your mind in this world. Basically, you need to go insane because this world is so horrible and all the monsters do such mentally traumatizing things that you your brain couldn't handle that trauma if you weren't fucking crazy. Hey, where the fuck is it? Here it is. Order of Death. Once per showdown, she can give everybody some insanity. Plus, there's a, um... There's a mental disorder you can get in this. There's a whole deck of mental disorders that your character can get in various ways. But there's a mental disorder called Immortal, where your character believes that they're immortal. And because of that, any damage they suffer is dealt to their insanity instead of to their actual body. So as long as they stay insane enough, they really are functionally immortal. But it doesn't always work out so good. Um... This is where the humans ended up after the cows kicked them out of the Milky Way for beef-related crimes. You have to go cray just to make it today, one might say. Yeah, good point. Alright, cool. So we've done the Endless Screams. Now, we have to do the um, Gorm Climate, which is up here in the Gorm book. Gorm... And here's some art that I don't understand how is related to the Gorm, but maybe this the Gorm's kind of area, and when you go there, there's body parts everywhere. We've done the approaching storm. I don't want to do fed. How do I do Gorm climate? Okay, we did Approaching Storm. Oh, it's a settlement event. Okay. We have to, it's in this deck. We've already probably, we've already probably put it into this deck. Yeah, Gorm Climate, okay. So this has to happen. The returning survivors find the settlement tormented by relentless foul weather. Add Gorm Climate to the next lantern here on the timeline. Oh, good. So this is the gift that's going to keep on fucking giving. More Gorm Climate every fucking year. Oh, and I do have to check the box of this year. All right, I have to roll and see how screwed we are. I'm not a fan of any of this. All right, who's gonna preside over this roll? Who has survival left? Ghost Skull, I need you to do this roll. 
A nine, okay. That might not be terrible. Does the settlement have storytelling? Oh, if your answer is no to one of these, it's never good. Oh, well, maybe it is good. We don't have storytelling. Uh, the settlement struggles against the quaking ground, linking arms to brace themselves against a storm. Nominate a survivor with zero hunt XP. They draw strength from the settlement's determination and gain one courage. Alright, I think we're going to nominate this crazy guy. The, the crazy dude who's lost his wife in childbirth. And, uh... Give him a little courage. We haven't even named him yet. Okay. Wait, jagged pellets of sizzling rain... Sizzling hail rain from the sky. Yeah, Vestophobia, man. Who is too terrified to wear anything on his head. <laughs> he gains a disorder when his wife and child died. Corroding anything they touch when they land. All... What the fuck did you just say? All resources in the settlement storage are lost. You may avoid this by dismantling an innovation. Return it to the innovation deck to create a protective barrier. Oh, hell no. Now, that doesn't include all the ones I just brought back, because those aren't in the storage yet. They don't go into storage until step nine. It only includes the ones that I had left over here, and I don't remember which ones those were. I think it was just literally these three right here. It doesn't include the ones I just brought back, because we haven't put those in storage yet. Those are on us. Oh, those are if you roll the one... Oh, thank God. You're right, Nox. I thought that was just blanket text, and then the... Yeah, okay, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. That's good. But I have to keep in mind that it might happen next year, right? Because we know Glorm Clam is going to happen next year, and... Probably again every year because if the card comes up and the card tells you to add it to the next year, it's going to keep coming up forever until something else happens, some other event that's probably related to hunting Gorms removes this from your deck so or from your timeline. So this might happen a bunch of times in a row. What that means is I probably shouldn't keep shit in the storage. I should try to like use all the resources that I can each time because I might come back and lose all my resources if I don't. So it's good to keep that in mind. Actually, I'm gonna put this right here since we're gonna, it's gonna be the gift that keeps on giving. Alright. Sweet. So our timeline is done. Now we get to develop. We have four endeavors. I can use them for a variety of things. I could fuck around using them just to play some drums, but I find that unlikely. I, um... Obviously I'm going to use one to innovate. To get a new innovation. And I have to spend a bone, an organ, and a hide to do that. So we spend an endeavor. We'll spend these testes. We'll spend a generic monster hide. And I need to spend a bone. We've got a lot of cat bones. A lot of lion claws, so we'll spend a lion claw. And now we get to draw two cards from our innovation deck and see which one we want. I can learn. Oh, not partnership again! Get out of here, partnership! That one sucks. Paint! Oh, paint's good because it gives you the dash action. I, now, I don't understand why. Having paint helps your people run faster in battle, but let's not question it. The settlement swells with creative energy. All survivors gain the dash action, and we add paint consequences to the innovation deck. What is it? Art? Yeah, it goes in the art section. So, so far we have one art, one home, and one music. No faith, education, or science. Get out of here, partnership. Nobody wants you. Now I gotta look for the paint paint consequences. Like 
sculpture and pictographs. And face painting. Important technology there. Okay, so now those three get added to my innovation deck and are possible for me to get next time. Maybe the paint is like Caddis from Dragon Age. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming it's like magical paint, basically. Anyway, everybody has the dash action now, which is quite good. It can really be a lifesaver. It can really be a lifesaver. He can't encourage because his jaw is broken. Forever, apparently. At least until a dark dentist fixes it for you. <clears throat> I can't believe I got tumble. Get out of here with tumble. Alright, um... So that's our first endeavor. Our second endeavor is absolutely going to be People of the Skull Time. Skull Ritual. Four survivors will consume the skull and get a permanent plus one to all attributes. It's amazing. So we get rid of the skull. And of course the four are going to be our core full. So Ghost Skull. Oh my god, her stats are getting so good. Considering we have no gear, these characters are actually really powerful already. And Bone Tree. I still think in the long run it's going to be better to have the gear. Because gear is your primary source of, of advancement and um, power in the game. So not being able to use a huge percentage of the gear that's in the game, especially the better gear, is going to hurt us. But if we keep getting skulls regularly, then... Oh, I forgot movement too. Oh, we're going to have some mad fucking movement. And then, Laughing Skull, no. You are done here. Thank you for filling in, but it's, it's time for our leader to come back to us. I like the fact that the leader is the one that got Orator of Death. Three speed! Wait, why does she have three speed? I know she started with one extra speed. Oh, because we've done two skull rituals. Ah, oh, shit, that's a lot of speed. Okay. We have two endeavors left. Here's my options. I could... Build a skinnery. Practically useless to us. Build a bone smith. Absolutely, that needs to happen. Build a stone circle. I can make some nice stuff with the stone circle too, I think. But I think I mostly need stuff from the screaming antelopes to make stuff that from that. Like those beast knuckle guitars are nice, but yeah, you need stuff from the antelopes to make them. Oh, those bone earrings are really good. But you need stuff from the antelopes to make those too. So I need to make a fucking bone smith. Let's get rid of this. Give me a bone smith. Where the fuck? Seriously, where bone smith be at? Am I just blind? Oh, I am just blind. There it is. Bone smith, bone smith gear. All right, we have a bone smith now. Which means we can actually make some fucking weapons. Which is great. We have one endeavor left. I don't know what to do with it. I'm not going to build a weapon crafter yet. Although most of the things of the weapon crafter we won't even be able to use. Because most of them don't have the bone keyword. We're, we're not going to build a stone circle yet. I can do an augury. Or I could do drums. I think I'll probably do an augury, because if we can get our population up one more, we can trigger the principal society thing, which would give us some kind of advantage. So an augury could let us get a child. 
You have to endeavor to glean the meaning of existence in order for people to fuck in this settlement. Or you have to have love juice. One or the other. Alright, let's talk about what we're going to make here. Well, first of all... How many more monster greases can I kick out? Lucky charm. First, two blue affinities. I don't have anything that's going to get me those blue affinities. I don't have any scrap and I don't have heat so I can't make monster tooth necklaces. So I think it's just going to be a bunch of bone weapons. What, how, what are we working with on bone count here? Oh, and we add the Katarium. After our first real lion kill, we add the Katarium as well for free. But again, a lot of this stuff isn't going to be any good for us. Because looking at the stuff we can make in the Katarium, we could make a lion skin cloak. It has the bone keyword for some reason. What does that require? Two white fur. We do not. We do have two white fur. That's actually kind of nice. Um, but most of these items. Uh, we do have a cat eye. We could make a cat eye circlet. What does it even do? Reveals monster hit locations and put them back in any order, but it takes your action. Alright, uh, Saito, have a good night. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for hanging out, chatting. Hope you have a good one. I'll see you next time. Frenzy drink is what you made out is what you make out of lion testes, but it's not very good. Like the bow doesn't have bone. The guitars don't have bone. None of this armor has bone. So the only things we could even make... We could make a lion headdress. Make a whisker harp. What do we have? Do we have the stuff to make a w golden whiskers and a bone? Well, we're not going to waste a bone. You know, lion headdresses aren't bad. Oh, no, we can't because... Oh, no, it does. it's not armor. The rule is anything that says armor or weapon has to say bone or else we can't use it. But anything that doesn't say armor or weapon, we can use. We could make that Kadai circlet. This lion skin cloak. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's do an augury. Who's gonna do this augury? Well, nobody has much understanding. And we are fucking boned on survival as well. So, I guess Blood Skull will do the augury. A seven. You could make it an eight with her one survival. Alright, let's do it. Get some intimacy going. Oh man, we don't get dick for departing survival though. I need to get some departing survival bonuses stacking up stat. Which means I need fresh acanthus. Which means I need to go hunt the, the antelope. Because you can get acanthus from... Because normally you're getting your... You're getting your... Um, initial survival bonuses from stuff like... Rawhide gloves. And rawhide boots that give you extra survival when you depart. But I can't wear those. And I gotta decide what kind of weapons I'm gonna make. I've got... Okay, what can I make with great cat bones that I could actually use? Uh, 
nothing. Okay, so I can just use those as generic bones. Same with lion claws, right? Yeah, I can't use any of those items that are made out of lion claws. So those are just going to be generic bones for me as well. So I have five bones. God, I have a stupid number of hides and like nothing to do with them. Other than make limes. No, those only require fur. Headdress only requires shimmering mane. I'm just going to have to hold on to the hides, which sucks because I might lose them all. Like, once I make something else, I might be able to make something else. <laughs> that didn't even make sense. But anyway, oh, this is the endeavor I'm using for that augury. So we did trigger an intimacy event. So let's get intimate up in here. All right. Ghost Skull is going to do the intimacy. I mean, she's not actually going to do the intimacy. She's going to roll for it. A nine. Great. <gasps> we can get a savior. If I spend a survival to make that a 10, because we have the hovel innovation, on a 10, a special child is born instead. On this day, everyone remembers the birth of a special child. Where she steps, hope flourishes. Birth of a savior! Oh, let's get a savior going. First of all, that also raises our population to 15. Okay. So this is our savior. Oh, Nox, you're right. Fuck my life. I do have to roll twice and take the lower one. Okay. Good call. Man, survival of the fittest is kind of awful. That means she did not spend a survival. Alright, we got a... We got a 9... And a 7. Well, we'll take the 7. Plus one population. Male and female gain plus ten survival each. And we did have another babby. And the great news about that is, it triggers this. Principal Society. Here's the art for Principal Society, apparently. I don't even... That, some scary ass shit. There was once a mad woman who spent her days talking to the darkness. One day it spoke back. Ah, the baby does have plus one strength. Alright. Uh, you know what, I, I don't need that. This is the, this is the strong baby. Strong baby.
What? Um... This is Bone Breaker. Named that as a child. And he will choose plus one strength for his special People of the Skull bonus. So he's coming out the womb with two strength. Dude's ready to bust some shit up. Strong bow. Alright, anyway, one day the darkness spoke back. We have to decide between collective toil, which is what I chose last time. Tainted by darkness, a survivor nearly brought ruin to the settlement. On the day of her exile, the people decided that all must spend equal time hunting and working to avoid future disasters. Minus one population. Add Bone Witch to the timeline three years from now. I don't remember Bone Witch being very good. Oh man, nominated to four survivors, everyone gains five survival. That'd be really helpful right now. Timeless Eye is a nice fighting art also. Timeless Eye gets you perfect hit on a 9 or 10, which means if your character's built around perfect hits, it's solid. I never got that one, but I saw it in the deck and it looks great. But we're doing the evil ones this time, so it's time to accept darkness. The darkness spoke startling truths. It told the people they were monsters, just like the ones they hunted. The people accepted their monstrosity and their place stalking in the darkness. The settlement gains a society principle, accept darkness. Also, roll a d10. Alright, let's, let's do that. Let's grab, um, accept darkness. Uh, uh, wait, what? What just happened to your card? No, get out of, get out of there. Are you fucking kidding me right now? My card got embiggened somehow. Alright, that guy looks like he's accepted the shit out of some darkness. Dude, that card was ready to charge the pillar. The settlement no longer fears the darkness. Letting go means your resolve cannot be cracked. Plus two to all brain trauma rolls. That's kind of terrible. I mean, this one's way better. Extra, extra fucking endeavors? But, I'll take it. Here's something I'll completely forget to ever use. Right? Because by the time I have another brain trauma roll, I'm going to forget that we get a plus two to that shit. But you can remind me. Alright, now we need to roll a d10. Ghost Skull will handle this. With a five. Alright, so four survivors could gain a ton of insanity. Could be useful. Also could be dangerous if we're gonna hunt the antelope. Or we can nominate a female survivor. If you can't, nominate a male instead. Survivor is heralded as the settlement's leader. Oh, I've already got a leader. In Chaotic. Also, Leader and Order of Death Fighting Arts. Well, we've already got Order of Death, but... What the fuck does... Leader do? I think I remember wanting this one for my... Oh, when you encourage, they get a plus one speed? 
but only till the end of the round. Eh. What's this disorder do? If you're insane when you depart, you get a survival and a strength token? Oh, that's good. That's strong right there. But she's not insane. I'd have to pick somebody else. Well, Ghost Skull could be the leader. Congratulations, Gull Skull! You have been promoted to leader! Since, since Blood Skull didn't go out on the last hunt, she's lost her position. Ghost Skull. The Lion Ripper. Oh, but she needs to spend a point of survival to do that, though. To make that a six. Alright, she gets the Disorder and the two Fighting Arts. Pretty good. That's pretty nice. Gain survival and strength token. Every time you depart if you're insane. I wouldn't mind if everybody had that disorder. Okay, nothing else happens as a result of this, right? Okay, no. Alright, so we've used all of our endeavors. The only thing we can do now is make stuff. So what kind of weapons do we want to work with here? Well, we might as well make the Eye of Cat circlet because... Wait, that's an organ though. We need to make some more fucking monster crews. Hey, I wonder if we should do this right now. I wonder if we should fucking eat this fruit right now and start the Lonely Lady story event and see what happens. No, not yet. Let's make some weapons first and put them on our people. Then we'll eat the fruit. Because I don't know what's going to happen. Alright, I can make a monster grease out of this and out of this. So let's get rid of those. Let's make a couple of monster grease. And our leader's gonna have one. Skull's gonna have one. Fuck you, Bone Grinder. Okay, what else can we make? Golden Whiskers and a bone. We don't have Golden Whiskers. We could make a Lion Skin Cloak for somebody with two white fur. 
White fur, white fur. Because it has the bone keyword. I don't know why it has the bone keyword, but it gives you no armor, but it reduces damage from every hit by one, which is pretty nice. So that'll go on Bone Tree, the tank. And then we could make lion headdresses. We could make a couple of them, which would give us a tiny bit of head armor. Doesn't count as armor, though. So Ghost Skull and Bone Tree will get those. Well, we're going to make weapons. That's what I'm saving all these bones for. I was just looking to see what I could make specifically out of cat parts that aren't bones. Okay. We can't do anything with these hides right here. Nothing. And the fruit... Oh, so now I have I have five bones to use. So it means I can make five weapons because each weapon at the bone smith only requires one bone. Ooh, we can make a skull helm though. No, need to make weapons. I do want a bunch of bone darts. And somebody should get a bone dagger. All right, I'm going to make a bone dagger. And I think every single person in the team gets their own set of bone darts. So if we want to attack from a range and stuff, we can. But I don't know that that is as helpful as I think it is. Because the monster's going to turn in basic action and come towards you and maul you anyway. Maybe I'll make one set of bone darts. What does dagger proficiency give you? This, okay, the bone blade. Alright, specialization with sword is kind of nice. Specialization with mastery with sword is beautiful. Oh, axe proficiency is nice. That's really situational. The wound attempt fails. After performing any reactions, you may discard another drawn hit location card to attempt to wound that hip location again. Eh. Dagger master who's adjacent to the attacker and the wounded monster. Spend a survival to redraw the wounded hit location and attempt to wound with a dagger. Wait, what? That's pretty interesting. What if we all went fist and tooth for a while? Oh, that's a terrible idea. Well, no. What if we went fist and tooth proficiency just to wound once with fist and tooth, but then fought with real shit the rest of the time? Six two, 
Oh, an axe is nice. Oh, and dagger's good, though, for the extra survival. I want everyone to have the versatility of darts. We'll build other weapons when the time comes, when we have more bones. That's going to spend our five bones right there. Darts for everyone and one person gets a dagger. And the dagger will go to Bone Tree. Or maybe Ghost Skull. I just realized we have a lot of movement. We might be able to get to the point where we can just kite lions around and run far enough away that they can't catch us and just keep throwing darts. I mean, that'll only work to a certain extent because you don't have an unlimited amount of space to run around in, but like, it could help. Or whatever monster we're fighting, especially if we can like debuff their movement speed could lead to a good kiting opportunity. Oh, he has four evasion. Amazing. Ghost Skull's also got a dagger. So I think Ghost Skull... Now, you know what I'm gonna do? For reals? Because if you master Fist and Tooth, a really nice thing happens. If you master Fist and Tooth, you get a permanent plus two accuracy and plus two strength that you receive even when not attacking with Fist and Tooth. Of course, you don't get the benefit of another kind of mastery. Hmm. I'm not real thrilled about Dagger Specialization, honestly. Since nobody has any weapons right now... Alright, Axe Specialization is solid though. We need some Axes in our lives. So for right now, everyone is going to have Fist and Tooth. We can change our proficiency at any time, or at the beginning of any hunt. So, if, But for right now, there's no reason, because you can't have Dart proficiency, there's no such thing. So basically we're going back in and ripping some parts off with our bare hands again. And we're throwing darts. And you can use the darts in melee range anyway, so it's not like you're forced to be at range. Alright, cool. And then Ghost Skull's got the dagger. 
so that she can possibly get survival back. Because she's the one most likely to spend survival to encourage people so they can get that speed token. I'll probably end up giving everybody a dagger. And then what we'll do is we'll use a combination of fist and tooth, daggers, and, and darts. And then once everybody has those weapons, then I might start outfitting some people with axes and swords. So I can't do anything with these three hides. Now the question is, do I eat the lonely fruit? I don't know. This could com fucking completely annihilate me. Like, this could be super terrible. If I do this right now, I could just kill all my people. I have no idea how bad it would be. So, <clears throat> it's a it's a really tough to decide whether or not I should do it. I think I'll do it next year. Oh, but next year if I... If I come back and this happens, and I lose all my storage, I would lose the Lonely Fruit, which I don't want to, because I may never get another one again. Then again, if I come back and that happens, I could always sacrifice my drums to create a barrier. I don't know. I'll do it next year. Mostly because I want it this year to end. I feel a little bit better about us now that we have a, a couple of things. Arrowhaven. It's a lovely place where people eat their dead. So, the last thing you have to do in the settlement phase is decide what you're going to hunt next. We can go after the Gorm, or we can go after the Antelope. If you go after the Gorm, you can get a Gorm Chemist, and you can also get a Gormery. And I think some of this Gorm stuff has the Bone Keyword. But then there's the Stone Circle. Where you can make stuff out of the antelope. Let's just take a look at what things are going to be available to us. That'll let us decide who we should hunt. A generation suit is an item. It's an accessory, so we can wear this. Oh my god, look at that suit! At the end of the showdown, remove any permanent injuries you suffer- I need some of those in my life. What do you need to make that? A stomach... lining and jiggling lard, so I don't know how hard those are to get, but... What else do we have here? A lantern... A rib blade. Oh, that's a knife. That's a nice sword. Um, the, with the bone keyword. Well, nice-ish. Only if you can ignore the slow. Only if you if you're a berserker, and you can ignore slow. Otherwise, it wouldn't be good for us at all. 
Now that doesn't have the bone keyword. That does. Acid tooth dagger. Paired. Oh. On a perfect hit, a wound attempt in your attack automatically succeeds. <laughs> what? Okay, that's a nice fucking dagger. You could have two of them, and it would be pretty fucking strong. But the rest of this stuff... Oh, a gax? That's a strong axe. Wow, one with speed and savage. And it gains in a minus one of eight. Oh my god, there's some stuff we want here. And here's some armor spikes that also say bone. And the rest of this stuff doesn't have say bone, but man, that's some good stuff from the Gorm. Whereas, can't use that. We could use the Screaming Horns. That's pretty cool. Blood Paint. Oh, I do. Lance of Longinus has a bone keyword. Bone Earrings! All gear in your gear grid has the bone keyword, though. It's fucking good, though. Rest of this armor, though, I can't actually use. Oh, I could get make get those beast knuckle guitars. They're bone and they're paired. Ooh. So honestly, both sound good. I, I don't know if the Gorm is going to be harder or easier than the Antelope. I think I'll go after the Gorm, though, just because it's more interesting. Just because it's new and it's an expansion. And Plus, I feel like going after the Gorm will lead us to some sort of means of removing the Gorm, Gorm climate thing. So I should definitely go after the Gorm next. Um... Yeah. I'm not going to eat the lonely fruit yet. Now the bad news is, as we prepare, we get, like, fuck all for survival right now. One point. One lousy point of survival each. Oh, I need some acanthus! Okay, I need to go after the antelope first, because... The, the antelope is where you get acanthus. Because those antelopes eat acanthus, and so there's like a bunch of acanthus around them on the board when you go after them. So let's hold off on the Gorm for a second. When does terrible stuff start happening to me? Oh my god, I have to fight the Butcher in two years? Fucking high? Alright, well... We'll go after the antelope next. So let's get things set up for that. Let's move all these white lion cards. my white lion area. I don't know why I didn't just put it all back in here, but... Alright, but I need to pull out this stuff for the antelope. Now here's the screaming antelope, I mean, you can't really tell when I look at it like this.
but it's got a giant fucking maw on its torso. Like right here, this looks like it's just a big green thing, but that's actually a giant fucking mouth. Toothed mouth al along its whole torso, so it's kind of a crazy creature. I'm not going to need the legendary for a long time. Antelope legendary, antelope special, antelope basic. fuck is the antelope doing? Antelope advanced. Antelope hunt events. Antelope resources. Antelope at basic action card. Antelope hit locations. I've never fought one of these antelopes. I have no idea what it can do or what kind of nonsense is awaiting me. Everything is set up. Everything is set up for the antelope now. And I turn to the antelope page. All right. So this is where I save for the end of the year. Now that we're all ready to go. Slightly more equipped than we were last time at least. Still a little bit worried about our chances. Cause I don't know how tough this creature is. So now we've finished a, uh, our first couple of years for the Marrowhaven settlement. Next year we go forth to hunt the screaming antelope, as exciting as that is. But I think that's going to have to be on our next episode. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays. Kingdom Death Monster.